My name is Jenny. Hi, I'm Frankie. Hi, I'm Annika. Hi, I'm Chloe. I'm Alex. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Our, <laughs> our topic is graphene oxide fertilizer and epigenetics. So as most of us know, or I hope we know, uh, <laughs> global warming is a global epidemic um, that has potential to um, destroy our Earth, basically. And if global warming continues, um, almost all plants will die out by 2100. Okay, so how do we know about graphene? So we actually had like a lecture on graphene by Professor Richard Kainer, and he's also from UCLA, and we got really interested, so we did a lot of research on it, and we found that graphene is one of the most strongest and like most versatile material on Earth. That's why we're inspired to use graphene in our development. And we also got inspired by this researchers from University of Adelaide. They use graphene as like a fertilizer carriers and it can bring a lot of like significant potential benefits to agriculture in the world. And lastly, we got inspired by researchers from UC Berkeley, which proteins can be taken through roots. Basically, like plants can suck up the protein, and proteins technically like the enzymes that we're going to be adding to our development. Oh, and just to set like a background info, because I don't, I'm sure like not everyone knows like what we're talking about yet. And one um, topic that we chose was epigenetics. And I think most people in this room know that the genes we inherit are from our parents' DNA, but epigenetics states that our parents and our ancestors' experiences can also be inherited in the form of chemical tags. And um, so how this works is shown in this diagram. And DNA exists in our um, somatic cells and our germ cells in the form of chromosomes, and they look like these funny looking X's right here. And those X's are made of like tighter bundles of like ball-like structures called histones. And once those histones are attached with certain chemicals, it can induce um, epigenetic changes, which like encourage or discourage genes from being read. And the second topic of our project was um, graphene oxide. And graphene is primarily, primarily made out of carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen atoms, which are arranged in flat sheets. And because our project is mainly focused on um, helping plants combat climate change, we wanted to use the chemical properties of graphene oxide to better plants' like absorption of nutrients and induce these epigenetic changes to make them better suited for a hotter climate in the future. Um, this is a diagram of how graphene oxide may be used in commercial fertilizer in future years. And as you can see, it's very holy and has a lot of negative space. And that allows um, these micronutrients like zinc, iron, um, phosphorus, and others to bind onto graphene. And actually, since the um, structure is not water soluble, it can withstand um, high temperatures and um, weathers that are um, variable in um, humidity and other factors. So it, it provides nutrients to plants at a um, higher efficiency rate than most fertilizers and induces these um, genetic changes that we kind of want to um, explore more on. Um, this is a 3D model of graphene we made using an Adobe application and it kind of gives you a better view of what we're working with. Um, so as you already may know, climate change is a big problem on our planet. And if humans don't act quickly against climate change, scientists say that by the year 2100, many plant species will be going extinct. And as you can see, the orchids to the left and the Indian pipes to the right are already being impacted by climate change. This affects animals that rely on these plants for food, including us, 
and makes the ratio of animals and plants in ecosystems unbalanced. One example, oh. One example of an ecosystem that's already being negatively impacted by climate change are coral reefs. So coral reefs are really sensitive to ocean acidity and CO2 actually raises the acidity of the ocean. By the time climate change is reversed, many plant species will already be extinct, which is why we are trying to implement our fertilizer, which can save plants' lives while scientists are still trying to fix climate change. By saving these plants, we're also saving animals, the earth, and ourselves. So overall, our development is about uh, graphene fertilizers and epigenetics to help plants to adapt to climate change. And by adding graphene oxide, which is cost less, it's more efficient than regular fertilizer. Fertilizer, I'm sorry. And also fertilizers and with epigenetics, this can cause changes and these changes can help plants to adapt to climate change. And this fertilizer will be beneficial to like the ecosystem and to the environment. Um, here's a video we have done for our project. <coughs> Epigenetics and Graphene Fertilizer by Annika Wu, Frankie Sun, Alejandro Garcia, Ni Quach, and Jenny Huang. A DNA doodle. What is epigenetics? Epigenetics means changing the way an organism looks or behaves without changing the DNA itself. Epigenetics can tell plant cells to read or not read a specific gene. There are two main types of epigenetics, acetylation and methylation. Acetylation basically puts a tag on a gene saying, read me, while methylation puts a tag saying, go away, don't read me. You may be wondering, why epigenetics? What if we just cut out the unimportant genes entirely? Well, here's the answer. If we permanently cut specific genes out, it'll prevent plants from having genetically diverse offspring. Also, if the climate is stabilized in the future, we won't be able to reverse permanent gene alterations. That's why epigenetics is a safer choice. We plan to pair this concept with graphene oxide, or GEO. GEO can be implemented into fertilizer, which improves the fertilizer's resistance to natural disasters. Also, a tiny amount of graphene oxide fertilizer can provide nutrients for many plants because of the graphene's ability to bind to nutrients and slowly release them. As global warming becomes more prevalent at this time, more and more species are at risk of being wiped out. This is why it's our mission to try and save plants from our mistakes using epigenetics. We can change the phenotypes of plants to make them more resistant to the effects of global warming. We can change the color of certain plants in order to make them more resistant to heat. There are so many ways epigenetics can change our world for the better. The possibilities are endless. Theoretically, human life would be near impossible if plants happened to die out. Using epigenetics, we can help these struggling plants survive in the wild, plants the earth needs. You may be asking, why shouldn't we wait for evolution? The answer is, we don't have time for evolution. Global warming is happening at an extremely fast rate, and humans have been a catalyst for global warming. With epigenetics, we can help plants rapidly adapt to their environment, making extinction of certain species a lot less probable. The graphene oxide is more effective and adds to the durability of the fertilizer, making the whole process a lot more effective. In conclusion, epigenetics can help plants survive through the crisis of global warming. Using graphene in soil, crops will be more durable. This process will ensure that plants can survive through natural disasters and keep the cycle of life moving, leading to a healthier, happier planet. Um, so for the future perspective of our project, um, so we're thinking if our GO fertilizer becomes available for like commercial use, scientists could prepare plants for an ever-changing climate change. If it's like being correctly utilized, epigenetics may be proven to be more efficient than the genome editing, which is like CRISPR, because it maintains the um, genetic variation. 
It does not necessarily change the DNA itself, so it can always be reversed and modified. Um, as a result, the geo fertilizer could be um, epigenetically modified plants, thus preventing the plants um, from vanishing by uh, 2100. Geo uh, fertilizer could also be used as a potential treatment to treat specific genes with cancer. So um, in conclusion, epigenetics allows plants to adapt um, into harsher environments and could potentially have a huge impact on the planet. Um, if epigenetics is successfully incorporated into plant development, it could also mean encouraging these same benefits in animals as well. So um, in addition, epigenetics could also be used to predict and treat inheritable um, diseases within human genome even before they occur. So thank you guys.